is a pleasure to be here tonight. Thank you guys for having me here. It's not every day that I see people face to face, as I said a few minutes ago. So some people that we were used to, to see on cameras is now they are here. When you were praying, something came to my mind when you were asking for the good spirits to give us the strength and everything. Yeah, I will need it. Because I only memorized 50% of what I had to say. And I had a little problem on the train, so I forgot the 50%. So you all need to help me. You don't mind helping, do you? Good. I found one that's willing to help me already. So, uh, well, I said briefly, do I, who am I here? But a few people just came in. So my name is Guilherme. Feel free to call me. Stop my study anytime. I would prefer to have that interactive, if we may because I think it will help me and help everyone, right? So, the title of what has been brought to me was Spiritist Philosophy and Mediation. And I had problems to think about what to speak. First, because I didn't know who would be here. And now that I realize we also have kids, I have to adapt to what I taught as well, because some words I will not say because I don't want to scare the kids, right? <laughs> you don't need to be afraid tonight. So, let me start. Introduction. I decided to read a book that's not very common is that what is the spiritism? We all like to read spirit's book, medium's book, any other book. And this book that's quite important is quite often forgotten. I don't know why. The first part of the book is very, very interesting because then we are able to realize a little bit what was Kardec's mind. His mind was so sharp. Because the first part of the book is someone, I don't think he used the right visitors or father or anything, I think he just got a name, asking questions and he was answering in light or spiritism. And from time to time I decided to go to this book because it reminds me of things. One of the things that he said was spiritism, spiritualism and spiritualized because it's a bit of unclear what is what. Even for the spiritists, it's unclear what they are. Well, let me make things more simple. It doesn't matter what they are. The important thing is be spiritualized. Anyone can be spiritualized. Anyone. Even people that don't believe in God. Because what is being spiritualized is be driven by good actions, by good thoughts, perform things that the great majority of us, we don't do, despite which name we decide to give to ourselves. There are people that don't even believe in God, that are way better than me, than the spiritists like we are. So it's not important, the word. Important is to understand what they think. And Kardec said that to new things we need new words. At that moment things start to be a bit clearer because there's so much in common between spiritism and spiritualism that it, it is amazing. There's a lot of things in common. And if you do not know, at the time in France, a bit before spiritism started with Kardec, there was a strong movement called uh, rational spiritualism. We had a spiritualism in UK and America, and we had one in France, pretty much the same, but they, they call different names, who knows why. And the spiritism basically is a consequence of the rational spiritualism, because it brought in so many things from that part of the knowledge. But then you will say, so spiritism is a consequence of spiritualism. You could say that. There's no mistake in saying that. 
Why I say there's no mistake in saying that? Because every spiritist is a spiritualist. But not every spiritualist is a spiritist. Basically, because there are minor interpretations of natural phenomena. And the most important to know is that it doesn't matter what you call yourself, it doesn't matter what kind of religion or philosophy you think you, you feel more comfortable with, the laws are exactly the same. The universal laws are exactly the same. The creator, master of the universe, God, you call as you wish. There's no problem at all. But his function in the universe remains the same. Likewise, our function in the universe remains the same. And everything that guides us through our life, every, every rule we have to obey and put this way, is exactly the same. Doesn't matter our creed, doesn't matter our color, doesn't matter our nationality, is exactly the same. There's one thing that uh, I was trying to find more information and it was very difficult to find written information. But it's easy to understand. Every religion is based on spirituality. Is that, do you think it's alright to say that? And you're very quiet so far, I'm not liking that so much. You said you weren't happy, but good. Yet. But you will. Don't worry. <laughs> So, do you think it's all right to say that every religion is based on spiritualism? Yes, it is. Because every time we try to improve ourselves, to do good, by ourselves or in group, we are elevating our thoughts. We are elevating who we are. We are preparing ourselves to a different states of mind. And what is religion if not people gathering to do something together, or at least should supposed to be like that, right? So it, it is normal and makes sense to say that every religion is based on spirituality. You watch a lot of movies, right? Good. Now you have. Have you seen that series, Supernatural, on Netflix? No. Oh. <laughs> I'll think about another one. Don't worry. But Supernatural. What is supernatural to all of you? Something that's bizarre? Something that is strange? Something that we cannot explain? Yes. Something that is scare us? Am I right to say that? You are little. I'm not going to push you. But I, I see you smiling. So. <laughs> but supernatural, well, the first thing that comes to our mind is something that we are scared with. Because we cannot explain or we do not know. Supernatural disappears in light of knowledge, in light of science, philosophy, and reason. Everything that anyone may decide to call supernatural is because we are lacking understanding. We are lacking the knowledge to evaluate, to reproduce, and to test the phenomena. And as we don't know, and as human beings are easily scared of, we get scared and become supernatural. Everything has started way before spiritism, spiritualism, any other religion you may think. And you will say, oh, I think he's a bit weird already. And now he's coming with a, some thoughts that doesn't make sense at all. Someone that we all heard forbidden people to speak with the spirits. The first one, who was him? Yes. Can you forbid someone to do something if it does not exist? I don't think so. So the knowledge was there and the other day we were studying even before Moses because we have data we have information for previous civilizations, like the Egypts, bringing to us that they consider something else, something after death. So that knowledge is with us since day one, possibly. If not since day one, 
when we start to do something wrong, we realize there was something else, and then we start to have that kind of knowledge. Kardec said something about science. Do you agree that spiritism is science? I'm checking every face here. Um, the majority is like, mm, I don't know. Mm. Maybe no. Science, science, science deal, deal with the matters. And, mm -hmm. and what else? And also, you know, the matters, thoughts. But is the scale uh, more different from the. Mm -hmm. But that it can interlink. Yeah, it's fair enough. I think it was developed as a science. Yeah. There was research, there was uh, the same process applied every time to speak to spirits, to, to speak with spirits, the mediums, they, they developed from, yes. uh, from the basket to the head, to the table. So there was a scientific approach to yes. it, and Kadek was Correct. a professor. And yes. Correct. Yeah. But I'll go a bit before that. What is science? It's a beautiful name, science. And everyone today needs a PhD and everything to consider himself a scientist. But it wasn't like that not so long ago. Science is an art of observation. Even today. This one, come over here. One time, two, three, four is a pattern. I am observing there is a pattern moving this form from A to B. Science from day one as the art of observation. We did not have instruments at the time. No microscope, no satellites, nothing. And that was science. Today we are still doing science observing things. But today we have the instruments. That's way better. I do not disagree that at all. But we are observing through one instrument. So science remains observation. Penicillin, Fleming, he found that by accident. Perhaps we are here today because of him. Why is that? Because he found a little fungus in his exercise. A fungus that was not there before. And he was about to discharge that sample in the rubbish. And what's that? There was a first observation that created penicillin. Saved lots of lives. Reason? I don't think I need to talk about reason here, right? Reason, we all understand, the spiritism, everything we need to rationalize, we need to evaluate, making questions that none of you did so far, right? I'm, I'm hoping you will do questions. And philosophy. But the science at the time of Kardec, going back to what you said, complementing what you said, science was philosophy of human affairs. That was considered as a science, like a philosophy. At that time in France, it was considered science. Later on, it split away entirely from spiritualism, and they start to fight between themselves, and then they decide to say that's not, it was not anymore. But at that time, when Spiritism was born, it was considered as a science. Not only that, Kardec had an experience as a scientist, and he applied a method, as you said, to come to conclusions. So that's why we call Spiritism a science. But nowadays, we still can call Spiritism a science. The problem is, many of us don't believe that. But there's a group of spiritists in universities and doing some projects, some research. They are doing science. I know some of them. Is it possible to do science with spiritism? I hope you think yes. Otherwise, I will recommend you to read a few more books. <laughs> because it's there. Right? Do you believe in the spirits? Very good. Do you all agree with him? We all believe in spirits. Mm -hmm. Very good. Do we accept this reality? Yes. 
If I tell you there is one spirit standing here, will you stay here or will you run away? We are here already, so stay here. And it's always hard to fight. Yeah? He's in the door, you have to pass through him anyway. But the thing is, I saw by myself mediums afraid of all the spirits. And they were mediums. They had the practice of writing and hear and seeing. And they were afraid of our spirits. That's why I asked this question. I guess, sorry, I guess this case is one thing you know that they exist, another thing is you see them. Why? Because it's different. I'm here. I know. Now, perhaps I was about not to come in flesh because of something that has happened in the way. Would you be scared of me? No, but I mean, I understand why they would be afraid, because, because I think uh, uh, maybe for me it would be the same situation, because I know they exist, I know they are here, I know there is some more, more spirits here, but one thing is I know they are here, another thing is I'm He's seeing He's at you. Okay. <laughs> another thing is seen there, so I guess this is the reason people get scared, even mediums. Mm -hmm. That's natural. This is very natural. Very, very natural. It, human beings are afraid about the unknown. Yes. You only be saved what I what yeah. I would say. Very good then. He's a medium as well. Have you talked to my spirit before? No. You're talking to me. Oh, yeah. I'm a spirit, come on. <laughs> I'm in bone and flesh, but I am a spirit. So there's no reason why to be afraid about the spirits. The only difference is we lost one body, this body. We still have a, another one. So there's no difference. I'm saying that, but I have a son that's very comfortable with spirits around him, talking and else. And I have a daughter that she is 22 years old and she's really, really afraid of all spirits. So I understand you. Mm -hmm. And now I'll leave my daughter away, otherwise she will complain with me. Just a question. <laughs> sure. Do you, how do you then differentiate if at all spirit and soul? In this very book, Kardec says there is no difference. In this very book, what is the spirit is? Right. Let's go back to the 1800s, where the Catholicism and a few other regions were very strong, and the soul was something very marked for some reasons. Right? So there was very difficult to Kardec to come and convince anyone that you don't have a soul anymore, you have a spirit. So he brought to us that when we are spirit in flesh, we call ourselves souls. When we lose our physical body, then we call the same thing spirits. You will see that in more than one book from Kardec, but in this particular one, he says it's exactly the same. There's no difference. I'll come to that question later, if we have time today. So, now you know, you can speak, you can talk to spirits every day, and you never realize. Mm -hmm. But talking with the spirits, they are discarnated, they lost the body, then is another thing. Should we convince others about the spiritism? What do you think? First of all, it's a waste of energy, because we don't convince anyone about anything. I'm not able to convince my daughter. How can I convince anyone else? And even Kardec at the time, he did not waste energy trying to convince anything about spiritism, about any phenomena. Point is, if you are prepared, you don't need to see anything and you will believe. If you are not prepared, I can show to you, I can invite you to meetings, mediumship meetings, materialization meetings, I can prove to you, to your senses, I can make exercises with you to prove there is something else, and in the end, you will not believe it. So why waste our time? So we should not try to do that. Some people sometimes ignore that a little bit. It's normal, we are human beings. We are trying to show to people what we believe, what we learn, what we know. But we need to try not to push so hard. Yeah, may I ask, uh, when you say, when they are prepared, 
what is that? And how do you get to that? Because... Let me give you an example. My son, he was five years old, and he started to talk to me about spirits. I never approach my son with a subject, because I always try to respect the individual as they are. I never try to convince my wife to be spiritist. She only becomes spiritist when she starts to have mediumship reactions. And then she wants that, you know, what's going on with me? I said, okay, let's talk now. We have to understand that mediums, indoctrinators, are prepared in the spiritual realm before coming to here. Likewise, people that have been exposed to that kind of knowledge in previous lives, previous incarnations, they will feel that is very normal. Very, very normal. Like myself, I was born in a spiritist family. Spirits, hiya, how are you doing? You alright? Yeah? Let's go to the meeting, come on, don't open your mouth, stay there. I was seeing everything. I was, I've started the mediumship meetings with 15 years old, for example. Never had a problem. I'm not trying to talk about myself, but it's something that is natural. Because it is natural. But the problem is, if my parents, they have a different perception of life, and they try to format me in what they believe, perhaps I will start to be afraid of. About anything in life, I can be afraid of. I can be afraid of planes, I can be afraid of a transatlantic ship, or whatever. So we need... Again, but we have to remember that for so many, many incarnation centuries, we are washing our mind with the, everything with the spirits are from devil, devil, yes. devil, etc. So this is imprinted in our souls. It it's is. natural for our, our babies, they take talk with spirits, our children, the three years old, they are seeing spirits, but the father and the mother, don't do that, I want to come here and pray in my home because my son is seeing spirits. It is natural, mm -hmm. but we are, it is imprinting yes. our minds, you have to That's say no, 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 no. Taking that on board, the majority of us, it is the first time we are spiritists. The great majority, it's the first time. Some made a second time. So, what we're talking in spiritism may be something very new to all of us. Not only that, as Elsa said, if we, let's go to Netflix again. There's a section of weird movies over there. Everything related to spirits is it's frightening. It really is. So if I'm a kid, grown up in that environment, where that's weird, that's bad, that's evil, I will believe that's evil. But it's not. If I may complement what you just said, is it might be our first or second time, first season has 170 years of give it or take. But there are other traditions that you said, it doesn't matter, right? We might have learned it and be spiritualized through other religion mm -hmm. or other philosophies that took this way. I totally agree with you. I have to remind you all that you were Catholic, you were Buddhist, you were everything. Because every time we reborn in a different country, in a different scenario, in a different family, we follow basically the great majority of the time. We follow what's there. If I'm a, from, let's say, if I'm from time of the Crusades, I was exposed to what? What was available at the time? If I was born again 300 years after, I was exposed to what? The knowledge, the religions, the package that was available at that time. So that's very natural. That's from Kardec. Spiritism is a question of personal creed. Kardec said, and we have no rights to push our convictions. Why I chose this sentence? Because even inside the spiritism, there's a lot of people that don't believe in part of spiritism. What are we going to tell them? They believe in what they want to believe. We believe in what we want to believe. Uh, well, I don't believe what is written, for example, in Andrea Louis' books. 
Yeah, you have the right to say that, to believe what you want to believe. But not believing that means you don't believe a good chunk of the spiritism. I heard quite often people saying, oh, well, Kardec made a mistake. I heard people saying that Kardec was wrong. Maybe. I was not there. But everything that I read from Kardec, everything I studied from Kardec until today, I could not share the same opinion. Perhaps it was incomplete. Because himself, he told that things would evolve. That's in the Genesis, by the way. So if it will evolve, means it's incomplete. So he said that. But to tell that someone that Kardec was wrong, I cannot. So here we go. Creed. We all have ours. Even inside the Spiritism, we all, we all have our different beliefs inside the Spiritism. Because we are human beings. That's very natural. But saying that is natural, but can be overcome. If we decide to study, really study the Spiritism. We don't become a Spiritist just watching a lecture, just reading a book from time to time. We do not. We need to really commit ourselves to learn what it's all about. And doing that, it will increase our possibilities to help others. I cannot help others if I don't understand the magnetism. I cannot help others if I don't understand how it works that water. I cannot help others if I don't understand what was step by step what Kardec did to convince himself first, to only after that convince others. If I don't know that, it's like I'm going to the university and I miss the first six months. I will suffer until the, the end of my university. Because that's very beginning, the six months I missed, no one will teach me later. So we can, should not jump in steps, but we should study everything. Not everything, but at least the basis. I'm saying not everything because today the amount of books we have, we need a couple of incarnations to read everything. So it's virtually impossible. So, is the spiritism well accepted? Mm. Are you all happy to say that spiritism is well, is well accepted? In Brazil, maybe. In places, I don't think so. Not even in Brazil. Depending where you are, in Brazil, yes. Depending where you are, people will look at you with funny eyes. And we know why. Right? For the same reason we were talking here a few minutes ago. So, in the future, the new generations, like you guys, will be easier. Because you have a better chance than I do to have science to support you. Because they will be able to prove things that we could not in our generations. And we see for the last four years, science is booming with one discovery after another. We are getting closer to find something. Because the sciences will never say they found the spirits. Because they found something already, but they have a hard time to say they found the spirits. They found our soul, they found something that moved our body, or, but, but one day, eventually, that will happen. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> not being a spiritist doesn't mean that you don't have the leadership. Because uh, sometimes people from evangelical churches, they call me, they call Basme, they, of course my phone number is there, so we talk about, they, they don't believe in reincarnation, they don't believe that you can cope with the spirits, but they try everything with the psychiatrists, etc. So they come to us because the psychiatrist says that you have to look for something to help. Mm -hmm. So uh, even yesterday, they came to my home to talk with me. Mm -hmm. She's from the evangelical church, doesn't believe in reincarnation, nothing, but has problems in the family with the obsession or well, um, leadership. Because it's not obsession. Obsession is because they are not treated properly mm -hmm. as a spirit. Because the spirit comes here and there, everywhere. No? I used to say that when we are prepared to take the worst medicine on earth, with the most disgraceful taste on earth, then we are prepared for the spiritism. <laughs> because we see a lot of people coming asking for help. 
but they don't want to go. They will research everything else, doctors A, B, C, D, for years. Until doctors come and say, I, I don't know, the exams does not prove anything, you don't have anything, but you know you do, because you still have the effects. And at that moment when science, the official science, cannot prove or find what you have, you are open to different perceptions. Many of the mediums that work with us in our institution back in Brazil, they came to us like that. We have four mediumship meetings per, per week, and sometimes some extra ones. So we have, I can make, collect some data and tell that a percentage of mediums that are working today as a mediums and don't have any other problem anymore, they tried everything before. Tried everything before. When they could not find anything else, then there was no other choice. They had to try the only thing left. And then found what they were missing. I, don't, I won't have time to talk about that, we can talk about that another day, but uh, there are some very interesting cases that show to us what you just said and we discussed it here. I'm working in the ship inside the Spiritist Psychiatrist Hospital in Chiba. I was one of the media. <clears throat> so it's a really, a, a, as a researcher there, was really amazing the way that a lot of evangelical people wants to put their, their the people there, because they knew that in psychiatric spiritist hospital, the treatment is... Yeah. Right? The, the institution that I'm still connecting with Brazil, they had mediumship meetings for years inside a psychiatric spiritist hospital. A lot of people that are there target as crazy, they were not. But there is an issue. If you can treat them in the very beginning, you have a great possibility to help them and they will have no symptom at all. But after a period of time, if they stay like six months, one year, chances will reduce a lot. And then they start really to have physical problems that you will not be able to help. Yeah, yeah but I think it's, everybody said it's important to say that in these psychiatric hospitals that I know have been through, couple uh, physical psychiatric doctors work alongside mediumships and other things so it's not only about you have to have the physical science the medicine to work together with mm -hmm. the media so it's not one or the other it, it's a long debate but it's, it's a long debate depending the stage the person is because if you use heavy drugs you create breaches on your bodies, spiritual bodies, that will increase obsession cases, for example. So, yeah, it had to be evaluated case by case. Right? The same way, many were called crazy. Today, many are well accepted. Even today, in the spiritism environment, many of us, we are called crazy because we are prepared to do things the majority are not. So that, that was just to give an, an idea. Like, the spiritist doctrine is based in reason, rational facts, moral science. We spoke a little bit about moral science here in the beginning. And if you want to know a little bit more, there was a research made by Paulo Henrique Figueiredo, two years ago, I think, and worth to read. It's very interesting. He, he spent a lot of time researching what was really the environment that Kardec was when he brought to us. Portuguese, right? English. I saw in French already, I saw a few things, not the whole book, but there are things. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, it's not a problem in a different language, because we all have Google today, right? Google Translator can do wonders. It's better than nothing. I agree with you. <laughs> Is it pos impossible? We cannot categorize something as impossible. It is already a step ahead, as the reason does not deny it. Basically, if any of you cannot tell me that something that I may say is wrong, if you cannot prove, I'm happy already. Because if you cannot prove that what I'm doing or saying is wrong, 
means there is a possibility already. And all of you, you have a massive question mark because in A subject, you could not prove me wrong. If you cannot prove me wrong, is you, yeah. who is right? So that's wonderful because then we have to exercise questions. We have to ask. Spiritism people nowadays, they are really, really afraid about ask questions. Why, I don't know, but they are. The facts could be spontaneous or we can push them to happen. So we have means to create the environment to create the data to allow us to evaluate something. I think there's somewhere there. Yeah. Okay. As example, existence of the spirits. I will speed up a little bit, otherwise I won't be able to talk about other things. The basics. The doctrine is from the spirits. I have a problem. Because sometimes I have the impression that a lot of spiritists forget that. Spiritism is the doctrine of the spirits, brought by the spirits, teach us by the spirits. And we forget from time to time. We have our own perception, we try to create our own understanding, and we pass the understanding to others. But we have to remember, spiritism came from the spirits. All foundations since the beginning till today, or at least should be, attributed to the spirits. Sometimes we forget that. I see quite often spiritist centers that uh, they don't have mediumship meetings. Why you don't? Well, we don't need it. We don't need it or we are afraid of spirits. Or we don't know how to do it. Or we don't want to get the right commitment to do it. That question that we need to make to ourselves. I know that commitment is very important, but people say, oh, no, no, the day after we do, you are social media, I need to be free because sometimes I want to, to go to the theater, or it's a nice week for day. It's exactly like that. But and it is a shame, because we that participate in spiritist meetings, we see how many people are helped, how many spirits are helped. And as a consequence, sometimes people are helped. And to be clear, the spiritism is an extension of the spirit phenomena. Everything we had from Kardec is an extension for, of what the spirits did, what they brought to us. But sometimes we forget it. Having said that, which is better than a leadership meeting? to demonstrate the reality of the spirit. I don't believe, I don't know, I'm afraid of, but I don't want to get closer to our spiritist leadership meeting. Why is that? Because Kardec started not doing a study group like we are doing here. Kardec started not making beautiful presentations or anything like that. No. He went to see the phenomena timetables and a few other things. He started getting closer to the phenomena to understand what it was. But we kind of lost that touch. We kind of don't want to get into it. And if spiritism was science at the time, maybe it's not today anymore, because we were so comfortable not engaging ourselves in something that was demanding a little bit more of study, demanding a little bit more of commitment. And we are afraid of our space too. So, this is something that we need to think about. Come on. Sure. Meeting ship. I'm trying to remember the first event in history that I, I read at least. The meeting ship was there. I think the first one was the time in Egypt when Moses and others even forbid mediumship to happen. But uh, back in our home country, we, we had the Aborigines, the Indians, practicing mediumship. Shamanism. Yeah. Yeah. So that is everywhere, everywhere. You just need to look after research. It is Socrates. Socrates has a diamond. He talked with his spirits, died in. It's from, from day one. 
And sometimes we don't even know we are doing it, but we do. Because we do not appreciate what's there. Some preconceptions make it more difficult and the most complicated prevent us to make charity. Do you think what I'm saying makes sense? That some of our preconceptions prevent us to make charity. In spiritism. Ooh, now I see my question marks. Age. We have to have certain age to talk about spiritism. We have to have certain age to talk about mediumship. We have to have certain age to treat influence with mediumship. I don't see that in Kardec. If you do, please let me know. I would love to find it. Overstudy. Now I'm like 22 years old. I'm in the Spiritist Center for like couple years and I would like to learn about mediumship. I would like to go in your mediumship meeting. But you tell me that I need to study five different books, five years each. I said, well, that's a bit harsh. But I will do. I really want to be part of your mediumship meeting. I will do it. On the end of that what I call university, I read the books, I studied all the books the time you told me to, in total, almost 10 years. And I come back to you. You were a bit older. Me too. I'm ready. I finished the university. Oh, but we don't have a place now. What do you mean? Well, we have a maximum number of people that can be part of that meeting. And we can. Does it mean that I need to wait someone to die so they can join your meeting? Pretty much. But it is the, it's very common that practice. It's difficult to find institutions that have two, three, four. But Guilherme, these rules came only in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Only in Brazil and spread in the world. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of the rules in yeah. the square box that yeah. you, you can act out of the yeah. square that you are part of them. That's why I said that inside the spiritism, there are a number of people that create their own spiritism. Because once again, if any of you find in Kardec's book that we have to do that in university, you told me, please show me. Because I could not find it at all. When I'm talking about Kardec, don't remain in the four main books, because one we almost don't read. Go to the uh, Spiritist magazine as well. Have a look if any, anywhere he said that we need to do that. If he did, I would change my speech for that. But I could not find it. You have to have, you have to study, have certain knowledge in order really to, to be aware of what's going on. But not uh, three years, etc. Exactly. And it depends. Case by case, it depends. It depends. If any of you come to me completely unbalanced because of mediumship, I need to do something now. If I tell you, you need to study three years, Maybe the difference to have you in an institution, a hospice, or a mental institution, or have you all right. So depending case by case. And I would strongly recommend, when you see something that may need an action now, ask your benefactors, what would be the best action here? What should I do? And if you want to change that speech a little bit, if you are totally unbalanced with your leadership, afraid about being crazy or taking drugs or whatever, would you like to be helped now? Or would you like someone to tell you, you study three years, then come back? Tell me. It can be together, the, the person can come to the center. Okay. A study is something that must, or must, should at least, be from day one until the end of our existence when we decide to join the Spiritism. Any serious medium, indoctrinator, speech, supposed to study. But we know quite well that's not true. Because we like people to tell us things in a way. I'm bloody lazy. 
and I want someone to tell me things, so I don't need to read the book thick like that. The problem is when we do that, we only have that little answer, and we miss the whole book. And some of the books we need to read a few times in our life, because you read the first time, you don't retain anything. The second time, you retain part of it. When you re read that few times on the end, you start to realize that how did I miss that here from the first time? And every time you read the book again, you will find something else. So it's highly recommended. Yeah, I know we're on time, but maybe for the sake of everyone, you know, I don't know if everyone know what a mediumship meeting is, what is an indoctrinator. Mm -hmm. Let me try. Let me run. Let me try. <laughs> Fear. I will try to speak before I finish. Fear. These are fatal spirits, but I love what you did because you said, I am afraid. I bet you're not the only one. I bet. Experience proved to me that a percentage of people in the spiritism are afraid of spirits. But people are shy, like I am. I'm very shy. So, fear. We are afraid about committing ourselves to the spiritism. Because to be a spiritist is not easy. We need to stop our wrongdoings, at least. So it's not easy. We need to commit ourselves with some actions. If we're going to jump in the mediumship meeting that we'll try to talk, we need to be committed. But the good thing is, we all want to have a nice benefactors, one, two, three, around us to protect us, right? Because a lot of people come to the spiritism trying to have a benefactor, to protect me. But we don't give them the condition to work with me. Actually, I push them away from me with my choices in what I do, with my tongue. My tongue makes things very difficult. So we need to stop having fear. Come on. Why do we have fear to have a virtual meeting? Mediumship meeting works and works very well. But following Kardec, that before we say something, you need to have facts. Before you say that you don't believe or it does not work, try first. Then you have at least one example to be used as fact. Just tell me because you think there's anything. And we do have facts to prove that's very functional, very proficient in the way of promoting charity. Uh, by the way, mediumship will not disappear. If you have mediumship, in some events, you may lose it if you don't use it well. But the great majority will have mediumship forever. Well, through the, incarn through the incarnation. Mediumship practice, I will try here to adapt to that. Right? What we should do to practice and research mediumship safely? Study? Always. Commitment? Always. If you decide to start a mediumship meeting, I want to be part of it. I'm going to a meeting today. Good? After 30 years, I have a place in your mediumship meeting. So I'm starting. I'm going today, I disappear for a month, I'll come back again, you allow me to come, good. I, I do two or three meetings, I disappear for another two or three weeks, that's never going to work. That's not serious. Come on. If you want to be part of it, you need to be serious. Because if you want to control and develop a mediumship properly, we have to be serious. So you want to ask something? Hi, oh, yeah, sorry. I forgot your name, sorry. No worries. Yeah. My wife does that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the mediumship follow us at all the lives we have, or mm, it depends. It depends. I prefer to give you a, an answer that will not make things more complicated. Mediumship is now, is this incarnation. You could be medium again in another one, but not necessarily. There's a lot of things need, that need to march to be able that to happen, okay? So it's better to consider this one. 
we have to listen to those that have a little bit more experience. You listen to your parents, don't you? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes? I will ask them. I don't believe you. You're trying to be nice with me. Because this is important. Not everything is in a book. Sometimes the practice brings us knowledge that we cannot ignore. And the most important thing, listen to the benefactors. We have to. If we don't listen to them, we may fail. If you don't listen to them, something is missing. Imagine if Kadek decided to do everything by himself, not listening to the benefactors. Safe mediumship practice. It poses mediumist faculty. You have the best means of convincing yourself through the mediumship meeting. I only advise you not to attempt any experiment before having made an accurate study. An accurate means that. So you never hear me saying you don't have to study. But case by case, you may need to act. Act now before it's too late. Okay? So now let me try to. I have talked about a few other things, but I'm, I'm bound to the time. What is a mediumship meeting? Is a table where we got together, we gather people that know they are medium or not, and we do some mediumship experiments. Because if I'm starting a mediumship today, I don't know any of you. You may be medium, maybe not, I don't know. How would I know? The best thing is to start with a study. Through this study, you start to realize who has some characteristics that we can say is Maybe mediumship. Okay? After a period of time, we start uh, experimentation mediumship meeting where we will do trials, we will do tests to see who has, who does not have ostensive mediumship. Mediumship we all have, but ostensive mediumship. So in that meeting, a lot of people get lost because they try to have messages only from benefactors, but the goal of a mediumship meeting is to help spirits that are in need. If you participate in a mediumship only to receive nice messages, I don't understand why. Why? You have the book already. Yeah, why? We should have a mediumship meeting to help those that are in need. The spirits that are in need. But not only them. Because when we do a mediumship meeting, perhaps we have a spirit that's very attached to you for a long, long time. So, this spirit come to the meeting, we have a talk, we speak with them, we try to use reason, and he decides to let you go. So we help not only the spirits, but also the incarnated spirits. So that's why I have a hard time not to, under to, to understand why some spirit center don't think that's important. Because I don't think anybody else does that. The spiritism, in the way the spiritism does, only the spiritism. They are order branches that do meetings but in a different way, in a different format, different objectives as well, different tools. But why not? That's why I think that we have a little bit of fear too much. But going back to the mediumship meeting. In that meeting we have what we call mediums around the table and we also have indoctrinators around the table. What is an indoctrinator? Someone that is very shy like me and like to talk to the spirits. Why is called indoctrinator? Because someone who studied the doctrine and in theory is a little bit prepared to have a conversation one to one. Again, quite facilitator or direct person. You can call as you wish, but Kardec, Kardec, Kardec. I think Kardec used the word indoctrinator. Andre Luiz used the word indoctrinator. So. But on the other day, I don't care about the way you call me. I don't care. The important thing is to do, to act, to do the charity. On top of those two actors, there are mediums and indoctrinators, sometimes you have mediums to do healing in the meeting. Sometimes they don't do healing in the meeting, but the energy support the meeting. So it's not because you don't write, you don't talk, that you're doing nothing. 
Sometimes you're the most important person in the meeting because you're donating energy to keep the surroundings protected, to keep the balance, to heal the spirit, to heal the participants of the meeting. And we do have different types of meetings, and that may vary from institution to, to institution, but basically that is what is a mediumship meeting. When you really start yours. I think that I may have plenty of time now. So I think that uh, we are coming to the time. I, I have to follow the time, right? And uh, only you help me. Should be a little bit, but you, you help. Thank you. Make my life easier. And I would like to say that uh, it's time to revisit. Hi, so. Hi, nice to see you. It's Sorry, time so late. to revisit ourselves. It's time to think about what we want from the spiritism. If what I want is just to see a lecture from time to time, so be it. But Spiritism is a massive tool to help others. It's a massive tool to help others. If you decide not to help, that is on you. You don't need to help only through leadership. Not at all. There are different ways of helping with spiritism. But if you decide not to help, then the burden is on you. Because as soon as you know how to use something to help others and you decide not to, the burden is on you. So I hope that uh, next time you speak a little bit more, help me a little bit more, but uh, I just want to ask you guys, do you have any questions, anything? Your presentation is very good. Which presentation? This one. <laughs> New presentation. So we need it. Can you send the copy to, to us? Mm -hmm. I will stop here, okay? Mm -hmm. You want me to finish here? I think it's here, no?